Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Just want to welcome you all to our Facebook Live family gathering today here. I appreciate your patience as I resurrected my smartphone this morning from the tomb of its ignorance. <laughs> Because I couldn't connect with Zoom and, uh, you know, technology during the, the shutdown situation in the world. But welcome to our Easter service and thank you for being patient with me. Today I just want to bring about a little bit of illumination for our minds. I want to talk about the true meaning of this very, very ancient celebration because we as divine metaphysicians, we understand that the focus of today's message is really about teaching the metaphysical interpretation of biblical scripture and stories to shine new light, new perspective on these old perspectives. I keep using that word perspective. <laughs> you know, we know that God is not a person somehow separate from us, don't we? And we know that our soul, uh, which is uh, a consciousness lives beyond the grave. There is no death. There is only this continuity of life into the spirit world, the higher spheres of reality. I love that beautiful saying. There's a radio show I've been a part of. We don't die. Radio show. There's a plug. But we don't die. How simple and how succinct is that? It really is the message of Master Jesus, Brother Jesus, Ascended Master Jesus, Yeshua ben Joseph, as he was known in his times. The Master Jesus truly came into the incarnation in human form to bring forward the message that all of the power that God is that created and manifests this loving, beautiful, intelligent universe, it's all inside of us. We hold the power not somebody with a, with a badge on a, on a beautiful robe that says preacher or rabbi or imam or what have you. And so we understand that the power, the light, the presence is right here inside us. Most of us grew up probably as Christians or Catholics, some of us Jews, maybe Muslim or some other world religion. We know the Christian story of Jesus. We know that there was this journey to the cross. We know that there was a, a crucifixion. There was a resurrection in the story. And so I want to talk with you today about the true meaning of Easter from our metaphysical perspective, because we don't often hear about this perspective, do we? Now, in the Holy Bible, Jesus teaches the people these exact same metaphysical truths, okay? The word metaphysics didn't exist 2,000 years ago, but the principles of metaphysics most certainly did. And, and if we can open our minds today to, to Jesus's truth teachings, these higher truth teachings, these metaphysical teachings, we will no longer fear death because we'll understand that there is only eternal life. What, weren't those the words that he always used? And so we understand that this Easter message is really about the symbology of the cross. Thank you, Spirit. I see that. I just saw a cross flash in my mind. You know, let's talk about that. This cross that we see as the Christian symbol, it's actually a very ancient symbol, and it's a combination of two symbols, okay? The horizontal line symbolizes human nature. The vertical line symbolizes our spiritual nature descending into a physical form, into a physical realm. And so that cross is a beautiful symbol of the intersection, really, of the spirit world with our physical life. And Jesus, the man, the human being, was really a symbol of God in human form. And the Hindus call such enlightened persons these avatars. They're physical embodiments of God on earth. And Jesus was a human being just like you and I. His soul was most certainly more evolved through many lifetimes. Am I back from outer space? I hope my Wi-Fi reconnected so you can see this pretty face. All right, hopefully I'm back, you guys. 
<laughs> Let's jump in where I left off. And so Jesus was that vibration that came forward 2,000 years ago, which started, you know those little bumper stickers with the fish, right? You know that bumper sticker with the fish? Well, what does that mean? Pisces, the age of the message of the Christed one. So he brought forward the Christ consciousness to our planet, and we all had that very same potential inside of us. And so that that's in the story, that crucifixion of Jesus, it does not symbolize him dying for our sins. Did you hear what I said? The crucifixion story has nothing to do with Jesus dying for our sins. Okay? I want you to get that because that's the message I heard growing up, the false message I heard growing up. Because the original word for sin in, in ancient Aramaic, it meant to miss your spiritual mark. To miss your spiritual mark. That's all it meant. And so, when Jesus, uh, when when Jesus talked about this, he uh, he basically was. Well, we could just actually talk about it this way: the crucifixion really is about crossing out negative thinking, errors in our consciousness. And so, every time we eliminate negative thinking and bad deeds, we are saved by our own actions personal responsibility. And the final symbol that I want us to consider today is a very powerful on this very powerful spiritual convergence and and that's that we are all taught this wrong law this the, the the wrong words. Let's say this, the wrong words of Jesus on the cross because growing up in in Southern Baptist religion in in rural Texas, a very white community, very prejudiced community, we were taught in our Baptist churches, just as many of you were probably taught in your, your Catholic cathedrals and wherever else you were taught, that Jesus hung on the cross and he cried out and he said, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? Uh, that didn't make any sense to me as a child. It's, it, it, I know it doesn't make any sense to me now as an adult because I know the truth. Jesus would never have said those words Jesus would never have said those words. He was 100% committed to fulfilling the prophecy. And when you go back and you read the scripture, you will see he was 100% committed. There's a little 100% uh, uh, emoji that Jesus pushed on his phone that day. You can't tell me he believed otherwise. That by his death that he would prove that there is life after death through a resurrection of a new body. That's what Jesus knew. And so the translation that Jesus of Jesus' word was, was actually wrong. And Jesus actually said in ancient Aramaic, these words, listen up. Eli, Eli, lemana shabakthani. My God, my God, for this I was born. Folks, is that powerful? For this I was born is the proper Aramaic to English translation. And so rather than this loss of faith in, in the last moments of Jesus' life on earth, Jesus is actually claiming to the world, to the listeners, to the people down below, to God, so this is my destiny. Lemana <laughs> shabachthani. And I just had a little funny flash, probably my little joy guy being cheeky, but I guess that was Jesus' moment of being the original Destiny's child, right? Folks, isn't this stuff powerful? Isn't it life-changing to understand these new perspectives? That's the reason we do these divine services. This is the reason why I share with you. I take the old scripture and teachings and I make it new from a new perspective. Folks, the true metaphysical message of Easter is this, that we are all divine beings. God expresses through me just as equally as God expresses through you, through each of us. God is never separate from us. God is never separate from me, no matter what I say, no matter what I think, no matter what I do, because God is expressing through Kevin right now, speaking to you, which is God in expression as well. This universe has got an expression. We are to be the masters over this human condition. And so I want to encourage you all today. 
in beautiful Easter symbology, roll away the stone of any thoughts that you are insignificant. I want you to roll away the stones of any lack and limitations in your mind. Roll away the stones of believing in illness, of disease in your life, or that you don't matter, or that you don't have value, or that you or that nobody hears you, nobody wants to listen to you. Roll that away. Roll the stone away. And let the light of our metaphysical teachings in this truth transform your consciousness into a very powerful, Christed consciousness that you actually are, you always have been. And this is who we came to earth to be. This is why we exist and why our soul is given this rare opportunity to take on human incarnation. This is why we return to the awareness that God has never left us. God is resurrected fully through our thoughts, our words, our actions in life every day. And it's my wish for each and every one of you today that it, it's this, that you each learn to unfold your Christed mind in this lifetime, in this lifetime. That's my wish for you all, that you rise up and you become the, the brightest example of a Christed being on earth. Lord knows we need a lot more of them today. And I believe in you. I believe in you. Has anyone said that to you lately? Amen? <laughs> and a women? You know I'd like to do, I'd like to go ahead and move into a beautiful meditation today, really for just the resurrection of our spirit, our Christed spirit within. Shall we do that? I'm going to try to turn on some music. And I hope you hear it. If not, you're going to hear my beautiful words. So let's do that. This beautiful music, if you can hear it, is channeled music on my album. I have a couple of albums, meditation albums. You can find those in my website. We'll put a link somewhere in the body description if you guys would like to listen to go and uh, listen to these. Beautiful. All right, let's do that. Let's close our eyes, center ourselves, take a comfortable position. Mm. And just envision the auric field around you expanding with beautiful white light and with every breath. You know, the, my gurus, my teachers, have always taught that when we take a breath, we pull in pranic life force into our lungs, into our body, into our spiritual body. So with every breath, imagine your field of influence, your Christed light, brightening, resonating to a higher frequency, expanding. Let's take a deep breath in and let that breath out, holding the light inside with every breath in. Again, deep breath in, pulling that light in, holding the light, letting out chaos, negativity to Mother Earth to receive. And last breath in, pulling in that pranic life force, holding that Christed light bright and strong, letting out negativity, dis-ease, and disharmony from our spirit for Mother Earth to receive and neutralize beautifully. And over these next few minutes, I want to encourage each of you to just roll away the stone that's hiding any illusions, any wrong thinking in your mind that you are not good enough, that you have no value, that you are not worth listening to, that you are, are suffering from in life, and or maybe you feel that God or Spirit is simply not strong in your life for whatever reason. Roll away that stone and, and in your mind, in your spirit, in your body, allow the light of introspection to begin to shine. The light of inner awareness. And begin to find where God's grace, God's goodness begins to appear in your life. Where has it appeared in your life? 
begin to find the little things that you can be grateful for. For example, in my life, every morning I sit outside, I take a cup of coffee, and I savor the warmth and the beautiful taste and the beautiful smell of that coffee. And it makes me smile. And that's God's goodness. And I can hear the birds nearby and I can feel the ocean breeze. What a blessing. What grace and goodness. And sometimes I can even hear these parrots fly overhead. How incredible. The colors stimulate my spirit. That is God's goodness and grace in motion in our lives. Simple things. Every Sunday morning, whether we are in physical form in our chapel space, whether we are in virtual form online, No matter where we are, just begin to find the beautiful things in your life to be grateful for. And in this moment, we begin to resurrect in our spirit, out of that darkness of the air we're thinking, we begin to embody the vibration of the Easter message. Today is really an ascension, a vibrational ascension in our spirit towards truth. I can feel that by our thoughts, by our words, by our deeds. Every day we, we bring God into manifestation on earth. And you do that. Yes, you. Because you are a divine creation. And I want you to feel this truth. I want you to feel the truth resonating throughout your whole being. I want you to embody this truth. I want you to embody this light. Become the light. And so it is. And I want you to affirm with me. I want you to feel the sacred Easter words that I repeat to you now. And I want you to, either in your mind or out loud, I want you to say these words. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Mother God, awaken the Christ consciousness in me. Christ and I are one. Joy and I are one. Peace and I are one. Wisdom and I are one. Love and I are one. Bliss and I are one. Christ and I are one. Christ and I are one. Christ and I are one. Deep breath in. Hold that light, plant that seed of truth into the garden of your spirit and let that breath out. Maintaining this vibration of truth in your very being for the rest of today, the rest of this week, the rest of your life, recognizing that this seed of metaphysical truth has now taken root in your garden. And every day we focus upon the beauty of the birds, the sound of running water, or the, the feel of God's divine grace across our skin, the presence of spirit, in the very air we breathe. We know that God's goodness and grace is all around us. 
And so begin now to return to those beautiful body temples seated in the sacred space of your home where your sacred family is eternally always available such as today. And let's just take a deep breath in. Let that breath out. Remembering our breath is sacred life. Our breath is sacred life. If you woke up today and took a breath, there is purpose in your life. You are sacred, purposeful life in motion. Let's take another breath in. Let that breath out. Begin to move your fingers, your toes. And open those beautiful eyes. Little tears right there. Little Christ tears. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that happens? Those beautiful little tears begin to form. The closer we are to spirit. The closer we are to spirit, our body begins to react. Not only our spirit does, but our body does. Our body may twitch a little. Our eyes may begin to water. Our breathing will shift and alter. And so we understand that spirit is around us in those in that, those little moments of symbology. I hope that was something that touched your spirit today. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for this ministry, for all that you all have done for this community over the last four weeks. We have received the donations you have been mailing in. Thank you. We have received the text messages of your donations. Thank you. We have received your faith pledges that have continued to be registered electronically in our system. Thank you. It is not easy to continue a ministry when our physical doors are shut and our spiritual family and our, and our, and our first time guests can't come through our doors. It is because of viewers like you. It's because of our family locally and our, and our friends. I, I see people in the chat room from California, from Canada. Hello. I see people from Wales. Hello. How incredible that we can reach out on a Sunday morning. Oh, don't get emotional, Reverend Kevin. I can feel it. How amazing that we can connect with people around the world. And we can share truth that needs to be taught in more churches. And so I just pour out my heart to say thank you for all of your continued contributions because without you, without you, that stone could roll back and close that tomb again and make the doors a little more difficult to open. We have to keep this torchlight of truth going and, and we do that through your donations. So please. If you're able to give something, please give. There will be some links in the bottom of our video message today. And again, for those of you who've contributed, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're not able to contribute today, pray for us because prayers are real things. Spirit says, I'm not going to keep talking because you know a preacher. You give them a moment and they'll keep talking. But I'll say this. Spirit has told us time and time again. When we pray for others, when we pray for a church, when we pray for, for anything, the columns of beautiful light, white light, rainbow colored light, columns manifest in the spirit world and they, they recognize these columns of light and they travel through thought down those columns vibrationally to the place of origin, our heart, our spirit. And that's how they find us so quickly. And so when you pray for the metaphysical chapel, and when you lift us up and when you surround us in abundance thinking and prosperity thinking and, and richness thinking, you make a difference for my community. You make a difference in someone else's life because the message continues through the work we're doing. So please don't forget us. Please send in your contributions. And just know that we're always here. I do answer your messages on Facebook. I do answer your text messages when you text me. I do pick up the phone when you call me. And I, and I am always here 
always here for you during this time, this challenging time for us around the world. Know that my heart is with you all. Our doors may be shut, but our heart here at the Metaphysical Chapel is always open. Many blessings, my friends. Namaste. The divine light in me recognizes, honors, loves, and bows to the divine light in you. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you again soon. Namaste.